Alrighty, hey future AP chemists, here's our first summer work lecture. This will be talking about the classification of matter through particle diagrams, or the way of drawing circles. In this lecture and lectures for the summer, if there's anything that's not in your notes, you could copy and write them down and you could use them in the future. So let's just get into it. So atoms or molecules. In chemistry, we typically draw particles as far as circles and represent them as atoms or molecules, which are two or more atoms combined. So you could see how here are my atoms here. Atom, 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 atom. Molecules, two or more combined. And I have examples here of atoms within molecules. This is water. On the left here, it has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. If you remember water is H2O, maybe you've learned that at some point in your life. Or I have hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2. That is two hydrogen atoms, two oxygen atoms to make one hydrogen peroxide molecule. So let's talk about these particles to classify matter now. Matter by definition is anything that occupies space, which has volume. Unit for volume would be the milliliter, and has mass. The unit for mass is grams. Mass is how much matter there is. Volume is how much that matter takes up space. So classifying them, we typically could talk about pure or mixture. A pure substance is composed of only one type of atom or molecule. An example would be an element. An element up here um, is a pure substance that cannot be decomposed into simpler substances. And here would be a particle diagram of an element that is pure. The element would be this, of course, whatever that is. And then a compound is the other type of matter, pure matter, where it's two or more atoms that are combined, typically associated with two different colors. This would be a pure compound, where the individual particle in here is a molecule of a compound two or more colors, but notice how, and I'm going to use highlighter here, notice how all of the particles are the same. All of it's the same, even though they're the same molecule, I have more than one of that molecule, it's the same, it's pure. Same thing with the element here, notice how all of the atoms are the same. Same atom, same substance, it is pure. Then we get to mixture, and we'll see more um, examples, but mixtures are two or more um, substances combined. And we have homogeneous mixtures, which is just the same composition throughout. Here is a homogeneous mixture. You have two or more substances in here. You have this substance and you have this substance that's mixed in throughout in here. And then we have a heterogeneous mixture, which has different compositions in different regions. Typically, it's associated with a layer where, and I'm going to label this as a heterogeneous mixture, and so I can clearly see that there are two substances in here. There's this molecule that has two black circles and this atom that's a white circle. Okay, so let's furthermore break down these particle diagrams into more classifications here. We have solids, liquids, and gases. Solids are the closest you could see in the closest you could see to in structure. Um, they also have the strongest intermolecular forces, and we'll learn more about that in unit three in the AP chemistry curriculum way later. Liquids are a little bit more spaced out, constantly moving and colliding. So if I add some heat, I could get it to melt. If that solid will melt into a liquid, the particles become spread out. And then eventually, if those particles spread out even more, I could get them to boil, or we call that vaporize, and they become a gas. And the gaseous particles are the furthest spread apart. Um, and I like to take up more space than they do there. And you'll see later on that they have the weakest intermolecular forces. Again, that's a unit three. I just want to introduce that vocab here, but I won't be asking about that in this lecture. So, so far we've talked about atoms and we have pure substances and mixtures and what they kind of look like. Here's a helpful little breakdown of the classification of matter. Matter can either be pure or a pure substance or a mixture. The pure substances can either be elements or compounds. Again, the way that I would draw them are all the same particle. And I would say for an element like this, this would be one color. For pure water, like a compound, all the same particle, but two or more colors, two or more 
colors. And I'm going to highlight so you could see the same particles. Same, 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 same. These are all this green color. Here's the same particle in this one. Same, 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 same. These all have one red circle and two white circles. All the same particle. It's pure, but one is an element and one is a compound. And then, of course, when we get over to mixture, we have heterogeneous and homogeneous. Homogeneous is kind of mixed evenly throughout. So examples of homogeneous mixtures would be like lemonade, Kool-Aid. If I had table salt dissolved in water... And then heterogeneous mixtures, you can clearly see that there's a layer here. Layers form because the two mix the two substances don't mix evenly. So an example is wet sand, or if you had water and sand, or other examples would be like uh, oil and water. They do not mix evenly, and if you've ever put oil in water, it kind of just sits on top. Here are more particle diagrams of mixtures. This is the homogeneous mixture. See how it's kind of like alternating, same throughout, kind of like yellow, blue, yellow, blue, but then heterogeneous mixture. There is clearly a divide there where there's one side and the other. Vocabulary wise, another word for um, homogeneous mixture is solutions. So make sure you know and recognize the word solution. We're going to get into separating these mixtures now. So if I want to separate a heterogeneous mixture, we use a separation technique called vacuum. Oops, we call the separation called vacuum filtration. We use this technique when a, a solid does not dissolve in a liquid. Use filtration to separate. And so here's what the setup looks like. Um, let's say I had my mixture. Oh, goodness. I had my mixture up here. If I poured that mixture through in here, I'd have some liquid that comes through, and we call that the filtrate. And then I have my solid that kind of remains on top. And this whole process is called filtration. You may have seen or done something with filtration if you've used coffee filters. When you make coffee, the water goes through and kind of the solid coffee grounds stay on top and only the liquid comes through. If I want to separate a homogeneous mixture, remember another word for homogeneous mixture is solution. If I wanted to separate two liquids, I could use distillation. That's how we get pure water um, using distillation. This is to separate liquids. So if I had to separate um, maybe alcohol dissolved in water, I'd have to use distillation. And the way that this occurs, and the most important thing to remember for right now that we'll use during the year, is distillation separates parts of a mixture based on different boiling points. Every liquid has its own unique boiling point. We're going to write that down here. Every liquid has its own unique boiling point. So if I had a mixture, let's say I had water, which has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius, and acetone, that's the stuff that's used in nail polish mover, has, I think it's approximately 67 degrees Celsius. If I were to boil these two, the acetone would come over first because it has a lower boiling point, and the water would remain in here. And so I'd have drip, 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 drip. Acetone would come over once this temperature reaches about 67 degrees Celsius, and I'm able to separate my liquids. Just some future knowledge for us here. Finally, the last thing we'll talk about before you get into some exercises is physical and chemical changes. So we've talked about pure substances and we've talked about mixtures. Let's talk about how pure substances could change into each other, or we could have mixtures kind of changing as well. So... A physical property is one that a substance displays when, uh, without changing its composition. So, for example, like color, boiling point, or melting point. 
those are examples of uh, properties that are physical. Physical changes change the change that alter only the state or appearance, but it does not change the composition. So look at my little particle diagram here. I have nine particles of this substance. Let's call it an element. In every box, I have a solid here. If I heat it up and I melt it, it becomes a liquid. If I heat that up again, it boils and becomes a gas. So these are examples of phase changes that are physical changes. So examples would be melting, which is going from a solid to a liquid. A boiling, which would be going from a liquid to a gas. S stands for solid, L stands for liquid, G stands for gas. I'll just put that down here if you need like a little bit of a reminder. I could also have the opposite, freezing, which would be liquid to solid. Oops. And that would be going this way. Or I could have what we call condensing, and you may know what condensing is if you've had like a cold bottle of liquid and you just leave it out on the table and you start getting some liquid on the outside, that's cold air particles that are condensing. That goes from the gaseous to the liquid phase. And so condensing would be gas to liquid. Notice how I still have nine particles in all of them. Same number of particles and the same particles. Same circle. I did not change them. This is a physical change because I have the same particles in each box. They're just separated. And then finally, the last thing we'll talk about is chemical properties or chemical changes. An example of a chemical property is one that a substance displays only by changing its composition. So, for example, um, its reactivity, uh, let's say its um, explosive point, like when it explodes, the temperature in which it explodes. In other words, it's flashpoint. if it burns, if it's flammable. These are examples of chemical properties. Um, a chemical change does alter the composition. So my before does not look like my after. It'll have the same number of particles. If we look, I have four, oops, looks like I have four red circles. I have one black circle and I have four white circles in both of them. However, they look different. They look different. This is going to be a chemical reaction. So my particles, I'm going to highlight them. These particles no longer look the same left and right. Before I have like a, it looks like a C with four H's and then two O2's. And then after I have an H2, two H2O's and a CO2 we'll begin to write what's known as a chemical equation, and that we'll learn way later in the summer. But this is a chemical reaction. The stuff on the left are my reactants. They do not look like my products. They are new substances that are created, hence a chemical change. Other examples are things that burn. Burning is an example of a chemical change. Like if I were to burn paper, the paper is no longer the same. I cannot go back. All right. Um, I'm probably going to have a skip this 1.5 section on energy. It's not going to be big um, in our summer work, but we'll see it again during the school year. The only thing that's very important to note about energy is that energy is not a form of matter. So things like light, heat, energy. These are not matter. They do not have space. They do not have mass. Energy does not have mass. Energy does not have space for us right now. So it is not considered a form of matter. And so examples of energy would be kinetic energy, which is the energy associated with motion. Potential energy is the energy associated with position. So if I have like an electron in an atom, if I want to remove that electron, that electron is going to require what we call potential energy or ionization energy. And the law of conservation of energy states that in a closed system, energy is constant, cannot be destroyed. This is similar to the law 
of conservation of matter where mass matter is conserved and not destroyed. So just want to end with that. All right, to check your understanding on this first lecture, why don't you try and answer exercise questions one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four ask you about the classification of matter and changes in, in question one. You have to identify the substance as pure and what type it is, if it's an element, a compound, or a mixture. Um, if it says pure, you're going to either tell me if the type is an element or a compound. If it's mixture, you're going to tell me if it's going to be homogeneous or heterogeneous. That's what I mean by type. That's for question one. Question two, you have to classify these substances as pure or mixture. If it's pure, tell me if it's an element or compound. If it's a mixture, tell me if it's homogeneous or heterogeneous. Question three, looking at these particle diagrams, tell me if it's a physical or chemical change. Remember what we just drew before. Are the particles the same or are they different? Are they just spaced out? A physical change would just mean that the same particle is spaced out. A chemical change would mean new particles formed. Do they look the same as before? And then finally, based on these molecular diagrams, classify each change as physical or chemical, very similar to up here. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me in Remind or email, or we could schedule a Google Meet to help you with these questions.